Welcome to the second video on how any MIDI controller can be used as a console in DaVinci Resolve to make video editing easier and more fun. In the previous video we used the Behringer X-Touch 1. We saw how it can operate DaVinci Resolve. In this video let's have a closer look how this is done and we will be using the Boom MIDI Translator app which by the way is a free app. Let's go to the Boom website and then in the menu products we can find the Boom MIDI Translator Pro. Click that link and it brings us over here. But we do not need the added functionality of the Pro version. We have enough with the standard classic version as it is called. So scroll a little bit down that page and there we find this MIDI Translator Classic link. Click it and it brings us over here. Uh, finally we find the download link for the classic version. Click that one, download the file install it, that's all one straightforward process. When all went well, we should now have a Boom Translator icon on the desktop and if we click it, then it opens the app like this. There is a purchase reminder, yes, also the classic version can be purchased, but it only takes away this next screen, so to speak. Uh, if you decide to just sit out this waiting time, and click this screen away, you have still the full functionality. So it's up to you if you like to buy it to support BOM. Of course, that's a great idea. Let's move on. We now have this uh, yeah, empty screen. And the first thing that we need to do is click over here to start a new empty project. And uh, let's have a look how that works. Uh, yeah actually uh, nothing happens. Uh, all we have to do is on the line that we get there type in a name for our project. In this case it sounds best to give it the name Xtouch1 to Da Vinci. This translator can be used for many things and uh, not only Da Vinci, any program you can control with it. Well, let's move on. Uh, the next thing to do is to tell it uh, about our MIDI device. So click the MIDI in uh, menu and then you should see in the list the MIDI device, at least uh, when you started the app after you first connected your MIDI device. Otherwise, of course, it cannot find it. So your MIDI device should automatically be in this list. Uh, select it and that's all we need to do here. We can immediately test if it works. Notice this little uh, uh, yeah, fake LED, it's now black and when we press a button or move a slider on the MIDI controller it should light up like this. That's the signal that everything is working okay. Well, let's start making shortcuts because that's all that this app is doing. It receives a MIDI command that is sent out by our MIDI controller and it can translate that MIDI command into a keyboard shortcut such that any app, in our case DaVinci Resolve reacts as it uh, should uh, normally do when you hit that keystroke on your keyboard. Well, let's have a look. With this plus button over here, we can add a new command. Uh, the first thing we have to do is give it a name. In this case, let's for this example uh, create the play and pause uh, shortcut. Uh, if I press the play button on my MIDI device, I want the timeline to start playing. What happens next is we need to click this edit icon to create our shortcut and that opens up this new window with three tabs uh, the first tab is the options uh, where we can give it a name if we not already did that and very important of course click the active uh, tick mark over here by default by the way it is clicked then we go to the second tab the incoming midi 
And there, if we set this tick mark, which unfortunately goes away every time that you create a new entry, but okay, then we keep just clicking it. You need to click this because then you can see the command that comes in. So if I now press the play button, this is the command that comes in. It's a MIDI on note with maximum velocity. And if I release the button, it's the same note with zero velocity. I click that uh, MIDI on uh, line and that opens up this new uh, outgoing tab where we now can select what we want to happen. In our case, we want a keystroke emulation. And then uh, we get in this window where we have to click here in this area and then we can make the keystroke on our keyboard. In this case for the play pause button, it is the space bar. In case we made a mistake, we can always press the clear button. It clears the field and then press the correct shortcut. When we are happy and done, then we click apply and look what happens next. Here at the top, we have our first command. When the MIDI command uh, comes in, uh, for play pause, it will send out the space bar as the shortcut key on which our DaVinci Resolve app will react. Let's do the next one. We don't have to close this window. If we rearrange the windows a little bit, uh, then we can immediately click here on the edit button and then the, that window will automatically be connected to the new uh, editing command that we are building right now and we go to the options tab to give it a name and then yeah and so forth and so forth in the end i ended up with this list this is the complete list of all the commands i used in the previous video for the x touch one yeah but i can't stress this enough it doesn't need to be the x touch one any midi controller will work and actually it doesn't need to be DaVinci Resolve, any other app will work too, as long as it receives keyboard shortcuts. Uh, now the question of course is, well, how did we know which keyboard shortcut is which function? Yeah, for that we have uh, to have a closer look at DaVinci Resolve, let's do that. In DaVinci Resolve, uh, when we hover with the mouse over a icon or a function, it shows a um, little note that also states the shortcut, if it has a shortcut. Selection mode, shortcut A. Trim edit mode, shortcut T. Place a marker, shortcut M. Strangely enough for the play button, it doesn't show the shortcut spacebar, so <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, by the way, on a side note, for the play button, I installed two uh, commands because I have a pedal switch attached to the X-Touch. And that pedal switch, yeah, that's very nice to use. There, there it is. It connects to the... Behringer and then the pedal switch also sends a MIDI command. So I now have completely hands-free play and pause uh, uh, opportunity. But that works really very, very nice. Okay, back to Da Vinci. What if you uh, yeah, want to use a function of which you cannot find the uh, keyboard shortcut because it simply doesn't show. Uh, I don't know if I can find one. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's not look for one. Uh, in that case, go to the DaVinci Resolve menu and then open the keyboard customization. And that brings up uh, yeah, the complete list of all the available shortcuts. And there is a long uh, list of uh, functions that you can click. Let's do the uh, edit functions. Then you have this list a bit shorter. But if you cannot find something, yeah, then just use the search function. Uh, and yeah, we can see that there are several uh, functions that do not yet have a shortcut. And yeah, in case we would like to use that command with our MIDI controller, then we can give it a shortcut. Just create a new shortcut over here. 
that's all there is to it. Uh, yeah, it works like a breeze like we saw in the previous video. There is another opportunity to get it to work that does not need the BOOM um, app. Uh, yeah, because you might not like that next screen or don't like to pay for it. I don't know what. Uh, there's also another completely free program called Auto Hotkey and this can also listen to MIDI commands and translate them into keystrokes. In the next video we'll have a look at that.